This video is intended for people who are not familiar with the AV8B cockpit. You will find it very useful if you are struggling to bind your controls, or have just started the module. I shall start with the right hand side of the cockpit, working my way round to the far left. Over your right shoulder we have the external power control or ground power control panel. This is currently not functional but it will control the various functions of the ground power connection including power to your stores, displays and miscellaneous systems etc. Next up we have the NVG stowage. This is where you store your NVGs when not in use on the helmet. Starting on the main right hand panels we have the environment control systems. These are functionally useless in the simulator, you cannot use them. But they control the climate and environmental factors such as cabin pressure. Next we have the internal lights panel. And here we can control the various floodlights instrument lighting, console lighting, and the warning, warning and caution lights. The floodlights are also mounted on movable mounts and can be directed around the cockpit. So if I turn the floodlights on, you can see the lighting can be moved around. Next up we have the ACNIP panel. This is not yet modelled, it controls the IFF and various decryption controls. Following that we have the V slash UHF radio set control panel. Here you can f change the frequency of your radio, the various modes, however it is not currently modelled and only simple communications available in the early access so far. Above that we have the battery electrics panel, DC test, APU generator, the engine starter, the primary generator from the engine and of course the battery itself. Above that we have the Anunicator panel. This will give you various warnings such as the status of your pumps, temperature. Generally speaking this is an advisory panel it is not necessarily critical. Next we have the brake and hydraulic pressure. You can see the pressure changes with the brake actuation, hydraulic and the accumulator pressure. If you see these drop you're in trouble. Moving up onto the main panel we have the fuel indicator this will tell us the various levels, including the feeder level, the total, internal, the wing, inboard and outboard external tanks. You can also set the bingo level here. This will cause a, a notification when you reach bingo. In addition, if you enable the fuel dump switches, it will automatically stop dumping fuel when it reaches the bingo level. On the right hand side of the dashboard we have the ECM panel. Set this to standby to enable it. This will set the ECM to automatically start jamming when it detects an incoming signal. The bit for bit testing, or built-in internal test, not modelled. Next up is the EXP, which is the expendable stores, specifically the countermeasure systems. Set it to auto and it will automatically pick between the top and bottom banks of countermeasures. Set it to top, it will only eject the top mounted countermeasures. Set it to down, it will only eject the bottom mounted countermeasures. Finally we have the RWR volume. Set this down to off, you can increase it to on and all the way up to maximum volume. We have the multi-purpose color displays, these are your primary computer interactive points. It also displays things like your RWR, your various sensors, engine information, and other useful features, including situation awareness and maps. Top right we have the engine panel. From here you can see the duct pressure, the engine temperature, the RPM, how much h 2 you have left, the no nozzle engine angle. Beside that we have the UFC or upfront controller. This is not modelled in a great amount of detail, however a few systems are enabled such as TACAN and the all-weather landing system. Beneath that we have the HUD controls. We have the day, auto and night options, the brightness settings, contrast for, and brightness for video. We also have the radar and barometer altimeters. Switching this down, for example, we'll turn on the radar altimeter on the HUD. Behind the stick we have the miscellaneous power controls. This includes the side slip indicator, the FLIR, the dual mode tracker and the INS alignment modes. These are co not currently modelled. So, all you merely have to do is enable nav mode. This will be added in subsequent updates. Beneath that we have the breaker panel for things like the flaps, 
the left side of the dashboard we have the water settings for takeoff, off and landing modes. See, we have the armament control panel, including things like the IR call, station selection, quantity, multiplier, interval release settings. Above that we have the second multicolor purpose multi-purpose color display. Again, much like the first one, large range of options and sensors and stores information provided here. With the flare salvo button, this will launch a large number of, sal of flares. Master arm, the master modes, as well as the optional display unit, which is associated with the upfront controller. For example, if I was to select TACAN, I can now configure parts of the TACAN system here. Either side of the upfront controller, we have the master caution and the master warning. The master caution system, if I just trigger it, caution. 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 Gives you warnings such as fuel state and H2O status. The master warning, on the other hand, is much more serious. If I trigger that. Warning. 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 It gives you information such as generator failure, over temperatures, over RPMs, and other system problems. On the joystick we have the sensor select switch. This can be pushed forwards, aft, left and right, but it can also be depressed inwards. This is a very important switch. It allows you to interact with your sensors and select which sensor you want to use at any one given time. I highly recommend that you have this bound. The trim hat, very nice to have, very useful if you're carrying asymmetric loads or doing long flights. It allows you to reset the resting position of your flight control surfaces so you can prevent drift. We have the pickle or weapon release button. The dogfight switch, this enables you to switch between three positions. We have the guns, the seam acquisition mode for the Sidewinder missile, and the boresight acquisition mode for the Sidewinder missile. Beneath that we have the pinky switch, this is your nose wheel steering button, it also undesignates targets for you. And we have the SARS disconnect paddle switch, this disables the assists and autopilots temporarily whilst held. On the right hand side, we also have the waypoint increment button. This will simply increase your waypoint up to the next one. And finally we have the trigger. This, as you might expect, releases your weapons. This fires the guns, the sidearms, and the AIM-9 Sidewinder missile. Starting on the left hand panel we have the landing gear indicator, the emergency battery for the landing gear. You may need to use this if the landing gear refuses to come down. We have the flap settings, from stall to auto to cruise. We have the flaps power, we can reset them, have them on, turn them off. Be aware that your flaps will rest by default at 5 degrees when in cruise settings. If you wish to gain a few knots and save some fuel you can set this to off or reset and your flaps will return to zero. With the emergency jettison push button, this will jettison all stores on your aircraft, the anti-skid. Enabling this will have those with steering on, anti-skid on and test modes. Next we have the gear handle. This is to raise and lower your gear as you might expect, but if you pull and rotate it you can also extend the gear in the emergency mode. Below this we have the approach lights and the hover lights, the RPS yaw, Q feel, altitude hold and AFC or automatic flight controls. We also have the pitch, roll and yaw, SAS stability assist controls. On the throttle we have the TDC slew, this is again a 5 position hat. You can slow it forwards, aft, left, right, and depress it. Depressing it is the action position, which will usually be used for designating targets. TDC in general is used, for, is, is used as the target designation cursor. It will slew any active sensor. We have the uncage button, critical if you wish to use Mavericks. It also allows you to change the mode of some weapons on the HUD. The countermeasure switch, this is for flares, chaff, both, and the ECM. Beneath the throttle we have the radio control switches, and we also have the, the manual fuel switch. This is important if you ever have an automatic engine control failure. You enable this switch here. Here we have the, the nozzle controls. You, you can bring these forward and back freely. However, there is also a stopper. This stopper is intended for when you're doing short takeoffs or other situations where you want to limit your nozzle angle. For example, if you were to do a short takeoff, you would run up the engine speed with the throttle, keep the nozzles forward. When you reach takeoff speeds of say 150 knots, you want to bring back the nozzles to 60 and then take off. 
this stopper is there to prevent you from going too far by accident so you don't end up going back here which is a nice simple operation but remember before you land or perform a vertical takeoff ensure your stopper is set all the way back so you have that access to the full range of movement on your nozzles next up we have the fuel panel here you have the fuel dump switches these will dump fuel again until you reach the bingo state as marked on your fuel panel we have the fuel pumps in proportioner all of these need to be on for engine operation next we have the external lights control panel with the formation lights these are the small strips lights on the outside of the airframe with the position lights these are the bright ones on the wingtips and tail anti-collision which is the blinking light and the auxiliary which is the external floodlights above that we have the seat height position changer which is currently not available and we have the lights master switch from normal to NVG mode to off you will need to turn these on in order for the external lights to function behind that we have the pilot services these include the oxygen important if you intend on going to high altitude and behind that finally we have the engine fuel cutoff and the digital engine control switch so that, that concludes the cockpit tour I highly recommend you have the sensor select switch bound remember it has five positions forwards, aft, left, right and depressed or down the weapons release, the trigger, the air-to-air -air dogfighting switch with its, which enables the sidewinders and the gun the nose wheel steering slash undesignate switch, the pinky and on the throttle the uncage button, the TDC 5-way switch the CMS 4-way hat switch as for controls you want to make sure you have the trigger bound this launches your sidewinders and sidearms and your gun the pickle button for releasing bombs, rockets and mavericks the sensor select switch which is a 5 position haft to toggle between all your different sensors it includes the HUD reject which is what is used to swap the HUD over to the forward looking nav flare you may want, but it's not particularly important, the waypoint increment button you will want the nose wheel steering or undesignate button take note of the name of this control, it says AG target undesignate slash nose wheel steering not nose wheel steering as most people struggle to find this and very important you want the ECM dispense switch, this is a four way hat with flares, chaff, ECM jammer and all in addition you may want to bind the flare salvo button on the throttle you will want the TDC this is for slewing your sensors and it also has an action position on the, on the throttle you will want the, the TDC the target designation cursor it has four positions forward, up, down, left and right but it also has a fifth position for TDC down which is action position this is used to designate your targets you will also probably want the air brake toggle switch bound to open and close your air brake finally for axes you will want for certain the throttle bound and the nozzle control lever this can also be bound as a nozzle increase decrease button if you do not have a spare axis be aware at the moment you cannot bind the TDC to an axis it will not currently work so stick to a hat for the time being as a final note make sure you bind the TDC down action button do not bind the toggle as this is non-functional in the current early access Best of luck with learning the aircraft and you can check out my other tutorials on my channel.